Hi everyone, my name is Ioannis Anifantakis. Welcome to a beginner video focused on the theory of deep neural networks. In this video, I'm going to focus on a very interesting subject of deep learning, regularization. If you have ever spent some time with uh, neural networks, reading the subtitle, When Doubt Can Lead to Better Decisions, you should be already speculating that regularization relates to approaching one of the most common problems found in neural networks, the overfitting of the training data. Overfitting is the line that separates learning from memorizing when it comes to training neural networks. And unfortunately, this is a very common problem. It occurs when you do not have enough data or if you keep looping over and over the same uh, data again and again, that is having too many epochs, without taking some of the available techniques to prevent overfitting. Now, there are many techniques and hacks that we have in our arsenal to fight overfitting. Some of these are data augmentation or dropout, regularization, early stopping, and few others. Overfitting could be visualized as the choking over the training data, allowing no, no mistakes on that training data, but also making you unable to generalize to data that has not been seen before. As stated in the previous slide, this is the analogy of uh, memorizing over learning. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm going to assume that you have basic understanding of overfitting when it comes to the theory, and we will just focus on regularization from now on. Now, regularization to my eyes is more of a hack uh, that we can use in order to punish high weight coefficients so that we can produce either sparse outputs or keep homogeneous small weights. And because I bet that the above didn't make much sense, like everything in life, we need to take a look at some examples. So, in this example that we're going to see here, if you were to decide whether x1 plus x2 produces less error than 10 times x1 plus 10 times x2, you would see that though they produce the same line, the certainty produced by the sigmoid of x1 plus x2 is much less than the certainty produced by the sigmoid of 10 times x1 plus 10 times x2, since in the first case, the probability of being blue or red is much lower than the second case. But this certainly provides a kind of stretching, stiffness to our line that we can see in our next slide. The stiffness on this line is the result of the high weight of the previous example. You can understand now that the graph on the left allows for better predictions than the one on the right, as everything tends to be either 0 or 1. Now, this stiffness and this tendency to be 0 or 1 uh, is surprisingly close to the step function when we were looking at the perception algorithm. It is the choking of the training data and it is leading us to overfitting as we now memorize the shapes of the data rather than generalizing. That obviously is uh, preventing us to uh, make successful uh, predictions for any new values that will be introduced to us. Now, compare the stiffness of this function to the step function of the perception algorithm you will see how similar they are. Such a stiff function could also make you understand how hard it is now to make gradient descent. And would also make you remember the Aztec pyramid example 
as the closer you are to the limits, the closer you are to a discrete model. Thus, by the above example, we can see that keeping our weights lower, we can get better model predictions. But now the question comes, how can we reduce those weights? Well, this is what regularization can do for us. It is really a simple hack. What it says is the following. In addition to our normal error, we will take into, ac we will take into account the weights as well. So by adding the weights to our normal error, it means that the higher the weight, the higher the overall error. So, by looking at the formula, the first formula, we see that the error plus the weights gives us our new error. Now, this is a little bit too much, so we may, we may need to uh, make those weights count a bit less or a bit more, depending on our case. So uh, this is where the constant lambda in the second um, bullet we have takes uh, its role. So the, this uh, lambda is a constant that is between 0 and 1, which obviously defines how much we want to take into account the weight uh, to uh, our overall error. In other words, how much we want to penalize our weight. Now, those weights can be taken into account in one of the two forms, as either the sum of values of all weights, which we know, which we call L1 regularization, or as the sum of the squares of weights, which we call L2 regularization. Since L1 regularization will make small weights go to zero, it produces spar uh, sparse vector outputs, and thus uh, can and thus is used to as feature uh, extractor, feature feature selection selection for the input data, since it uh, takes into account the most important features, turning others to zero. L2, on the other hand, is the one you will be mostly using. It is much more computationally efficient because the squares produce nice derivatives. It will treat all data similarly and uh, will not produce sparse vectors as in the case of L1 regularization. So expect L2 to keep weight homogeneously small. Now in PyTorch, you can uh, define the L coefficient of L2 regularization by making use of the weight decay parameter on your optimizer section. And thus, make sure that the resulting weights will be homogeneously smaller. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you very, very, very much for joining. See ya.